Using Stokes' theorem, we can rewrite the left-hand side of Faraday's, Faraday's Law. So you can see that's written in this form. So we can say that this is equal to the curl, and here b just represents a vector, uh, the vector, whatever vector is here. And so for our case, that's the electric field. So I'm putting in the electric field there, dotted with n hat ds. And since the surface s is arbitrary, we can equate the two integrals that we have. We have this and we have this. So now we can equate what is inside of those integrals. We can say the curl of E is equal to minus dB dt. And what we obtained is the time domain pointwise form or microscopic form of Faraday's law. Let's work through an example. The receiver of a garage door opener, the part inside the garage, uses a circular loop antenna with a diameter of two centimeters. The opener operates at a frequency of 915 megahertz. So let's write F is 915 megahertz, so we don't forget that we know that. And at the input terminals of the loop, right here, a voltage with a peak value here is reached, which is 0.5 millivolts. So I'll say peak. And that develops if the loop is oriented for maximum response of the, the other part of the garage door opener where we push the button from the car. So we have a signal from our, the button in the car where we push that we're sending to this receiver inside the garage. And so when this antenna, <laughs> which is what it is, uh, this loop is oriented in a certain direction, it will receive more of the incoming signal from the button transmitter. Now we're asking, what is the peak magnitude of the 915 megahertz magnetic field, H, in the vicinity of the loop antenna? 